Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk you through the tool PNP Generator on my website. And um, what this tool does is that it creates a list. And that's, of course, something that if you're using SharePoint or you're a SharePoint admin, you do that all the time. And you've probably seen in my other demos that I recommend using content type, I recommend a lot of things, but doing that the right way takes a lot of work. And this PNP generator tool is intended to make that much, much easier. So as you see, there are some inputs here, the group name, the SharePoint site URL, where you want your list to be created, the content type name and the list name. For now, this only creates content type based on the custom list because that's the one I most commonly do. So this is a lot for, for my own work also. So let's just add some example data so that we can see how this works. As you see, I have a group managed name for it called invoice management, and that's what this is about. Yeah, the content type name is in singular, so it's the definition of an invoice. It and the list, of course, contains invoices in plural. And then I'm just gonna input the correct URL for where I want this to be created. All right, then uh, down here, you have all the site columns. And as you see, I have renamed the title column to customer and uh, that is required. And I've also added some date columns and note columns, some currency columns and so on. And so this supports a lot of the different types of columns. And uh, I've also had the ability here to create list data. So let's copy all of this code. As you see, there's a lot of code down here uh, being created. I'll go through that shortly, but I'm gonna copy it first, and then I'm gonna show you how it works in the ISC, the integrated scripting environment, Windows PowerShell. So I'll run that as an administrator. And there we go. And then I'm gonna just create a new script and just paste all of this script here. So let's go to the top, control home, and see what we do. We have the test install, which checks if this PowerShell code is installed or not, the PowerShell uh, PNP library. And we have the add all, which adds everything. And then we have the remove all. And then I call these things, I call the test install, and then I connect to this site, and then I add everything. All right, so let's just run this now. And that should create everything in my site. So now I'm logging in. Since I already have the uh, login saved in my browser, I didn't get a prompt there. So now all of this is being created. As you see, the content type and then the columns. And then eventually I'll create the list and the view in that list also. Now the list has been created and let's go into the site and see how it looks. Site contents. And here of course is the list now and it has two invoices in it. There we go. So let's go in and take a look at that. And there's the list and here is the form. And there you go. I've done a lot of settings here that I like. Uh, for example, for now I'm using the classic interface, I'm adding a, a counter there also. And um, also, of course, I have the version history turned on by default. So th those are the defaults that I like to have. And of course, if I go into advanced settings here, you'll see that this is indeed connected to the content type. There you go, there's the invoice content type. So all that work is done for you. Yeah, with the tool. So let's continue to check out what the script is actually doing in detail here, so you know what you're getting. I have a hundred different ideas on how to improve this tool and how to extend it. So if you like this tool, then put a comment on, on the YouTube video or send me an email and say how would you, you would like this extended so that I know that it's being used. All right, so let's go through the script and just show what this add all function does. The, the test install actually, let's start with that one. That one checks if this PowerShell online module is installed. And if not, then it downloads the, an install package and, and, and runs that. But the add all is the important one, of course. This one checks if the, the 
content type is already there. If not, then it adds that and it puts the correct group in it, of course, and it just writes out that. And then it goes through all the fields and creates those. And as you see, it's very important here that I'm checking for the internal name. So all the, the columns have good internal names. And that's a very you know, useful thing to, to have. I'm also setting some, some defaults here. For example, this is a date, date um, column date time and i'm setting that to display format date only which is usually what you want the invoice services nothing strange there they just the usual stuff i'm setting the description there then we have the um, choices column there uh, the choice column where the different choices i'm setting the default value there uh, this one is a rather interesting the invoice value i find that in most cases, you want that displayed with zero digits, no, no decimals. So therefore, I create it with um, a field value from XML. So I create the XML string to create all that. All right, let's proceed with the script. So I'm creating all the fields. Uh, this one is rather interesting, the geolocation. I'm just creating that because that it has to be created via PowerShell. It can't be created from the UI. So. It's an interesting thing to create. A website, nothing strange there. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's go get into the list. What I do there is create yeah, the list with a URL parameter. Uh, and if you don't do that, then you get, if you have spaces in the name, then you get a strange URL, uh, things like that. So that's important. And then I enable versioning and I put it on the quick launch. Those are default values that I think are useful. Then I am setting the list experience to classic, as I mentioned before. Of course, you can change this script once you're done with it, of course, also. And uh, I disable attachments. Usually, you don't want them there. Uh, and I disable folder creation also. And then I set the default content type to invoice. And then I remove any uh, other content types that might be there. And then I set the... Um, enable content type to false, and then I rename the title field to customer, which was the, col the first column I defined there. And then I create a view based on all of these columns that I, that I have, and then I simply add a few list items. All right, so that's what the script does. Let me show you a bit more what this tool does. The first four here are simply text boxes, and I have some logic that if you type in a list name, then you start getting the list code there. So let's just do invoices there. And of course you need a content type name also. So now you should be getting the code here. And here you see, and now it's adding the content type. And since I haven't added a group name, it doesn't try to do that. So here's the list code. So far I don't have any columns. There we go. And then the SharePoint site URL. So that's the demo content that, that we had. I'm not going to do the entire uh, content, but what I'm going to do is just uh, do this. So now you see I don't have any internal names there, but if I say customer here uh, for the first one, you see it suggests that the first one should be the title. Uh, so I'm going to rename that. Of course, you cannot make that anything other than, than text because the title is a text field. All right, um, and then you, to get to a new row, you uh, press enter. So now if I do the amount like that, you see it's gonna suggest a naming standard there based on the content type name and the caption without spaces, of course. So it does what it can to, to help you with this. Press enter to get a new row. And as you see now, the uh, list data here that section is being modified. So I would suggest you uh, work with this last when you're done with the list, but then you can add list data also in this. So that's what the tool does. And as I said, let me know if you use it, if you find it useful, uh, I'll keep adding to this. Uh, for now, I'm going to use it myself a lot because I do create a lot of lists and now I'll create them all in the right way according to the best practices. Thank you for watching this demo.